Hello, it's Donna Joy Asher here, and today I want to talk to you about something very, very important. I want to talk to you about what part of you is running your business. And the reason I want to talk to you about this is because I was watching a Tony Robbins video the other day and I had like a big aha moment and it coincided with something like most aha moments did. It coincided with something else I was doing with my hypnotherapy course where I had been reading about ego states. So I'll get more to that in a second. But he was working with this woman who was having trouble progressing her business and she'd gotten to quite a good level, but then she was having trouble going beyond. And as he was talking to her, he could see why. And he started talking to her about the different versions of her. So the different parts of her within her, and he started calling them out. And he started calling out the leader, the friend, the mother, you know, all these different versions of her and giving them different names. And as he called that out of her, she changed, like the way she held herself changed, the way she walked changed, the way she answered the same question changed. And depending on which name he gave her and which persona she was taking on, she changed. Now, some of you may be mumbling multiple personality disorder or schizophrenia, but in fact, this is actually a very normal thing that we do. We develop ego states of segmentation within our personality. Now, don't get me wrong, ego states can be an unhealthy thing. So if you form ego states, states as a child from trauma or from interjection, then no, that's not healthy. But if we form ego states through differentiation, where we're almost like catalyzing our personality so that we can better deal with things. So that when we're the mother or when we're the sibling or when we're the child, we're acting in a more appropriate manner for each of those roles that we play in life. That ego state is a very healthy thing that actually allows us to have a very organized and healthy social life. Now, we understand that the role of the lover is different to that of the role of the friend. And we understand that the role of the parent is different to that of the role of the child. And we, we understand logically that the role of a, a business owner should be different to that of someone who's just doing charity work or just like, you know, helping people. And yet, while we understand that lover and friend are different and parent and child is different, for some reason, when we start to create our own business, especially as coaches, when we want to help people, but when we become a business owner, we take on the wrong persona. We take on the wrong ego state. And instead of being the leader, of being the warrior, we take on the ego state of being the friend. Now, we kind of, it's like we link being liked with being successful, when in fact being liked is a very poor measure of success. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you can't be liked as a business owner or within your business, um, or that we can't have friends with the people that we work with. What I am saying is that when we put our business hat on, the choices that we make as that person, as that leader, are choices that are what's best for what our clients, our customers, our business and ourselves not is what is just best for our employees. So I remember when I first had my first business, okay, a dental practice, and I made the normal mistake that new business owners make where I employed a friend. And I did this because I was already in total overwhelm by buying this dental practice and taking on this huge debt. And I'd never had a business before, right? not a proper business with this big debt and rent and overheads and all that stuff that's going on. So I was already in overwhelm and fear. So I took on a comfort zone and I employed a friend. Now, the problem with that was that the culture I created by doing that then became about the culture within the team of the friendship circle that was developing. And every time a new person came on, it became about that. And then I was unable to discipline my team. I was unable to be the leader that was needed because I had become their friend. And rather than taking, having the strength to step out of that friend role and into the role of leader and to retake control of my business, I ended up just selling my business and moving on. Now, I'm not saying that I regret that because that was part of the process that took me to where I am now and I'm much happier now where I am and I've learned so much more along the way. But I know that if I went back now to that business of having my dental practice now, that it would be a totally different case scenario. And the business that I would create and the choices that I would be able to make and how I would run my business as a business owner would be totally different than when I had run it as a friend. So I chose the wrong ego state to run my business from. So when my staff started taking advantage of me and how nice I was, was it my fault or was it their fault? It was my fault, of course, not their fault. I had chosen the wrong ego state. I had chosen to be their friend. And of course they were gonna take advantage of that. I chose friend, not leader. 
And so it was as a friend that I made decisions within my business and that ended up crippling me. It ended up exhausting me. It ended up making me make no money. I was working harder as a dentist and as a business owner and earning less in working six days a week, 13 hours a day, doing my own bookkeeping than I make now working as a dentist for someone else two days a week. So, and that was because I had chosen the wrong hat to put on. So remember this story as you move forward in your business. It can be tempting to make us to want, it can be tempting for us to want everyone to like us, but here's a new flash. Even if you do everything in your power to make everybody like you, they're still not gonna like you anyway. People are gonna choose whether or not they wanna like you based on what's going on in their own head, not on how nice you are. So that's not what you got into business for in the first place, right? You got into business, sure, because you wanted to help people. And you got into business because you wanted to create a stream of income that would change your and your family's life and allow you to help more people by having income that you could then do things with to help more people. Okay, so you, you got into business because you wanted to make an impact in the world, not just because you wanted to be liked by everybody. If you want to be liked by everybody, if that's really why you got into business, get out of business now. Go get some job where you are going to be liked by your own, um, dog shelter. <laughs> something like that where everyone's gonna love you and the animals are gonna love you and if that's what you really want just to be loved there's nothing wrong with that but it probably means that you're not gonna have a business that's gonna make you happy but if you got into business to make an impact in the world and to help people and to create a life that you love and that you want and it's gonna make a difference to you and give you what you want in life then you need to stop acting as the friend within your business and start acting as the leader so how can you do this well there's four different things okay you just spend some time with yourself and you need to dig deep um, and, and look at the ego states within you and look at the friend, look at the lover, look at the parent, look at the child, look at the leader, the warrior in you. And you need to call up that leader. You need to call up that warrior. So one is dig deep and identify that warrior. Two is call that warrior up and feel how it feels to be that warrior. Feel the strength within that warrior. The warrior has the strength to do what needs to be done. It has the strength to make those hard calls, those hard decisions, because the warrior is not worried about whether or not people like them. They're worried about making the right decisions for themselves, their family, and their business. Okay, so dig deep, call the warrior up, and then give the warrior a name. Give all of your ego states a name if that's gonna make it health, you know, for you. For instance, you know, I'm Donna Joy. When I'm a business leader, I'm Donna to my friends and family. Okay, people who don't call me, who don't know me well, call me Don. I don't like that, don't do that. <laughs> but Donna Joy is my business persona, okay? So give your warrior, your leader, a name so that you can really, really embrace them. Then once you've given them that name, consciously step into who they are to make any decisions that you have to be and switch this on and off you don't want to take that leader and always be using it with your lover you don't want to take that leader and be using it with your children you want to be who you need to be for them to them and for yourself use the warrior use the leader when you have to when you have to make decisions within business because that's the way it's meant to be done okay I hope that you got something out of this for the talk of ego states and embracing the leader within so that you can go on to make the choices and the decisions that you have to. And I will see you in the next video.